Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make sure that you get the meter correct, the DTSU 666-20, uh, to avoid any potential problems. Uh, the first thing I'd like to point out is uh, phasing. Uh, you do make, have to make sure that ABC goes to A, B, and C on the voltage reference points, and of course the neutral. It is clearly marked inside there. Please don't cross phase. Secondly, the CTs, and if you see here, they go from right to left, A, B, and C. Now, these are the CTs that you put over the mains uh, at the main switch. Please make sure you get the phasing correct on these as well, or you're going to have some strange readings. Make sure that they're correct polarity, in other words, the arrow must always point from the grid into the house loads. If you are connecting the secondary CTs, once again it goes right to left, A, B and C. Make sure you take the shorting links out if you're connecting a CT. If you're not connecting a CT, leave the shorting links in. And of course, the old favourite RS485, make sure you get that the correct polarity and that you use the correct ferrules, the bootlace ferrules, otherwise you won't get a good connection. Finally, I'm going to show you how to check the RS485. I'm going to use this little meter here. Now, I'm going to take you through how to check the RS485. If there's any problems with the meter communication, it is usually within that RS485 cable. So I'm going to take you through how to check it from the meter end up to the inverter. I'm now going to show you how to check the RS485, if it's working or not. It's quite simple. Disconnect everything from the RS485 because that's all we want to check. In this case, we've disconnected it back at the inverter end. So there's literally nothing connected to the cable here. And I'll just get a multimeter, put it onto the DC. Uh, you're not going to be able to see this, but if I go into A and B, and I have 4.6 volts, which is correct. Uh, minimum about three and a half. But if you get zero volts, then possibly there's something wrong with the meter. But if you get a voltage, RS485 is fine at the meter. I'm now going to check the RS485 at the end of the cable that connects to the inverter. Once again, it should be about four and a half volts. So I've disconnected it out of the plug and this is basically connected straight to the meter. So I'm going to go on RS485 A and B and I have 4.3 volts, which is correct. Please note the length of the bootlace crimps. They do need to be these extra long ones to be able to push into the plug. So I'm now going to check the RS485 coming out of the inverter. So cross-reference with the little chart on the side to make sure you get the right connectors. And you just push your probes in like this. The inverter's switched on. And I have 4.5 volts, which means the RS485 is working. Now, if you've done everything correct and you've checked all the other stuff, you should be able to push these terminals in like that. I can stop trembling like that and it will detect the meter. Now, if you do have your three and a half to five volts here, you shouldn't have a drama. It should be working fine. If you like, if the cable's more than 10 meters for sure, uh, you can use one of these 120 ohm resistors that will help balance the signal and you just put it across A and B. The easiest way to do it is when you're crimping the cable with the bootlace crimps is to put the legs of this in as well and crimp them all together. 